what is up guys and we are back with another video and in this video we are going to be comparing kazuha and sucrose but before we jump into any sort of testing and the direct comparison and all that there are some things i gotta say so the very first thing i want to say is we're going to be testing a pure support kazuha and a pure support sucrose what that means is they're both going to be using the same exact artifact set and same exact artifact pieces and going full elemental mastery and just to make it as even as possible, they're both going to be using a level 1 weapon. So we're going to look at how good both of them are in terms of generating energy, in terms of doing damage off the field, as well as how much they improve your team's damage. Number 2 is we are comparing a C0 Kazuha to a C6 Fischl. And I see a lot of comments when I'm doing comparison like these, calling this unfair, comparing a C6 4 star to a C0 5 star. Well guys, if we do a C0 5 star to a C0 4 star, there's, it's not even a point of comparing anything because obviously the C05 star is just always going to be better. C04 stars are not as good. And another reason for why I do C64 stars compared to C05 stars is because the rate you get four stars compared to the rate you're going to get the character you want. So let me explain what I mean by that. If you guys are going for Kazuha, maximum it's going to take you 180 pulls. Obviously, you guys can hit soft pity and all that, but maximum amount it's going to take you 180 pulls. Now, in those 180 pulls, if Sucrose was on this banner and she was rated up, you'd probably get a couple Sucroses. You'd probably get like three or four, right? So the chances of you having a C6 four star, especially if you purposely roll on the banner they're rated up on, is a lot higher than you getting constellations for your five star. And that's just facts. And aside from that, their talent levels are also the same. We have Kazuha six across the board, and then we have Sucrose with six across the board, minus her auto attacks. So the reason we leveled Kazuha's auto attacks is because his plunge that he does that turns into a Nemo damage is actually scaled off of his auto attacks and not just his E ability. Whereas Sucrose, you're not really ever going to be using her auto attacks except to like trigger swirl easily. But with Kazuha, if you're plunging down, which you probably should be anyway, you're going to need his auto attacks to deal a good amount of plunge damage. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started with the stats. And as you guys can see right here, I have a level 80 Kazuha and with three elemental mastery pieces and just a level one weapon, he is sitting at 688 elemental mastery. Now with this, I'm getting a 409% swirl damage bonus. Granted that I do have four piece viridescent, so I'm getting 60% from that, but that is still a lot of swirl damage. And as you guys can see right here, with the level one weapon, his attack is 646 and my crit rate and crit damage is 33% and 102%. And then my energy recharge is 141%. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Sucrose with the exact same artifact pieces. And let's go ahead and look at her stats. Okay, so I went ahead and switched over. And as you guys can see right here, my Sucrose has lower attack. And that's because she has lower base attack. She also has lower elemental mastery. And that's because she gets less elemental mastery compared to Kazuha when you level him up. But then you can tell my other stats are exactly the same. My crit rate, my crit damage, and energy recharge are all the same. The only things that are different are going to be these stats right here. And that's because Kazuha's base stats are just higher. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, and the very first thing we're going to look at is how much their swirl damage does for both characters. And as you guys see right there, Sucrose does around a 4k swirl at 3900. Okay, and as you guys can see right there, Kazuha does around 4200, so around 300 higher than Sucrose. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the E ability for Kazuha. So as you guys see, Kazuha actually has 5 instances of damage when he uses his E ability. So the very first thing he does is his E ability where he goes up and then he goes down. So both of these can swirl. So already right there we have 4 instances of damage, 2 swirls and then the up and down. And the very last thing is an additional attack of the absorbed element. So let me go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. So for example, when Kazuha swirls cryo here and comes down, he's going to do an additional cryo attack. And that's that other number that you saw beside the swirl. So in total, he's doing five instances of damage. And I'm going to go ahead and put the damage number up on screen so you guys can see the total damage amount with one E ability. And you can also hold Kazuha's E ability to do more damage and jump higher and get more energy. But it's at the cost of a higher cooldown. So in my opinion, it's just better to tap his E ability because the damage increase isn't that much. Okay, and speaking of energy particles, let's go ahead and talk about how much energy he's getting back with each E ability. And as you guys see right there, Kazuha gets 3 energy particles of a Nemo back per E ability. And again, it is only a 6 second cooldown. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at Sucrose's E ability. But also, in order to make the testing easier for me, I'm going to be using a food item. So you're going to see it at the bottom of my screen. All it's doing is increasing my crit rate. That way I get the crit damage number. But that's pretty much it. So she does 1890 with the crit. And let's go ahead and see how much energy particles she gets. 
so she gets 4 energy particles per E ability. And I know Sucrose has C1 which means she gets an additional charge of her E ability, but one thing to keep in mind is an additional charge of your E ability isn't necessarily cutting down the cooldown of your E ability. So when I use my first E ability, as you guys can see, it already starts to cool down. And then when I use my second charge later on, it doesn't shorten my cooldown at all because the countdown doesn't start for my second charge until the first one is back. So essentially, you still have a 15 second cooldown. That doesn't change at all. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at Sucrose's burst. So whenever Sucrose does her burst, it can infuse with another element, and then it deals an additional dot damage of that element. So that's why you guys saw three numbers, one being the Nemo damage number, one being the Swirl damage number, and the last one being that additional Cryo damage number because we triggered Swirl with Cryo. So another con with Sucrose is she has an 80 energy cost as well as a 20 second cooldown, so you can't use it as often as someone like Kazuha. But a pro for Sucrose that Kazuha doesn't have is her burst actually has CC and it pulls enemies in and knocks them up. But at the same time, a con that I need to mention as well is sometimes you don't get this additional elemental damage. For example, when I'm fighting this Ruin Guard and I use my elemental burst, even though it's affected by Cryo, Sucrose's burst doesn't get that Cryo infusion. And that's because the enemy has to touch the center of her burst, which only happens when it's smaller enemies or if you perfectly toss your burst. So that is one caveat with Sucrose's burst on top of the AD energy. So let's go ahead and calculate how long it would take for Sucrose to cast her burst again. So as you guys know, you get 2.7 energy per particle. So that means per E ability, Sucrose generates 10.8 energy. And even though she has C1, that means she gets an additional E charge. Like we talked about earlier, it doesn't change the cooldown. So that means after using her two initial charges and having to wait 15 seconds per charge, she's going to have to use five more after that. And if you guys quickly do the math, each E ability has a 15 second cooldown, meaning in total, after using her initial two E abilities, it's going to take her 75 seconds by herself to get her burst back up. And I know that 75 seconds seems unreal, but that's assuming that you have zero energy recharge from everything else, meaning you just have the base energy recharge that every character has. So now let's go ahead and look at Kazuha's burst and do the exact same thing. Okay, and as you guys saw right there, Kazuha's burst actually does more damage. He has an initial slash, and then just like Sucrose, he has a dot damage and then additional elemental damage. And even though this number is less, because Kazuha has higher base attacks, it actually outskills Sucrose. And not only that, one pro for Kazuha is that his burst actually procs 5 times compared to Sucrose who only procs 4 times. And another huge pro for Kazuha is his energy cost is only 60, whereas Sucrose's is 80. But the one con for Kazuha's burst is it provides zero forms of CC. And another good thing going for Kazuha is unlike Sucrose, which I showed you guys earlier, where she sometimes has problems with bigger enemies and getting that additional elemental damage to proc, Kazuha doesn't have to worry about that because as long as he triggers a Swirl reaction, his burst is gonna get that absorption. So just like Sucrose, let's go ahead and break down how long it would take Kazuha to get his burst back up, starting from zero. So Kazuha, like we said, has a six second cooldown on his E ability and he generates three energy particles per E cast, meaning he's generating 8.1 energy per E cast, which again is only at a six second cooldown, unlike Sucrose, who is at a 15 second cooldown. But paired with the fact that he has a shorter cooldown and a smaller energy cost, Kazuha only needs six casts of his E ability after his first one to get his burst back up. And because his E ability only has a 6 second cooldown, compared to Sucrose, Kazuha takes 36 seconds only to get his burst back up. That's basically half of Sucrose's time. Again, so far the only benefit Sucrose has is that her burst provides CC. But aside from that additional CC from her burst, Kazuha's just winning in every single category. He does more swirl damage, he has better energy recharge, he gets his burst up faster, his burst does a lot more damage too. So yeah, overall he's just absolutely destroying Sucrose. But let's go ahead and see if that changes in terms of support. So in terms of Sucrose support, there's three things we have to look at. The first one is going to be every time she triggers a Swirl reaction, everyone in your party gets a 50% elemental mastery increase. And this is her first passive talent. And then the second one, which is a huge reason why Sucrose is so popular. So anytime your E ability or burst hits an enemy, it doesn't have to trigger Swirl. It just has to hit the enemy. Your whole party gets a elemental mastery boost 
equal to 20% of sucrose's elemental mastery. And then the last one is C6. Basically, anytime you trigger an elemental absorption with your burst, you also get a 20% damage increase for that specific element. So when we're testing support for both characters, we're going to be using Kaya as a main DPS. So let's go ahead and look at Kaya's E ability without any sort of buff. So right now, my Kaya hits for a 9.2k with his E ability. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at it when we trigger Melt. So it goes up to 15.4k. And again, my Akaya right now has 56 elemental mastery without any sort of buff. And basically what that means is I'm getting a 10% damage increase in my melt damage. Okay, so now that we've seen how much my Akaya does with melt, let's go ahead and see how much he does with Sucrose's passive active. We're going to do it without C6 and then afterwards we're going to do it with C6 active as well. And as you guys can see right here, Makaya's Elemental Mastery went up to 226, and his Melt Damage went from 10% to 40%. And my Melt Damage went to 24.6k. The only two things that were active right there were the two passive talents from Sucrose, as well as the four-piece Viridescent Shred. Now let's go ahead and activate C6 and see what that looks like. And again, right now, Makaya has a 0% cryo damage bonus, and that's because he is built for physical damage, but he's still dealing a good amount of cryo damage. But when we activate C6, this should go to 20% right here. Okay, as you guys can see, Makaya's cryo damage is at 20%. Okay, and as you guys saw right there, with the 20% cryo damage bonus active, our Kaya went all the way up to almost 30k damage. Okay, so for Kazuha, the only support he's going to be providing from his passive talents is going to be his second passive talent. So basically, for each point of elemental mastery Kazuha has, he's going to be giving 0.4% elemental damage for the element swirled. So when reading this, you might think you just have to trigger any swirl reaction, but it's just mistranslated. Basically, whatever element you swirl, that's the damage bonus you're going to be getting. With 688 elemental mastery, you guys can tell that my Kaya went from 0% cryo damage bonus to a 27.5% cryo damage bonus. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So basically, our E ability went to 15k, which is about the same when we were doing a melt reaction. Now let's go ahead and see how it looks like when we do a melt reaction. Okay, so it went to 25k. So it's not that 30k that Sucrose was doing, but it's still really, really good. Now let's go ahead and break down everything we saw. So even when it comes to support, it seems like Kazuha does a better job there as well. And the reason for that is because it's giving a straight up elemental damage increase, whereas Sucrose is only increasing elemental mastery. So Sucrose is going to be really good for teams that rely on reactions, such as Melt teams, such as Electro Charge teams. Whereas Kazuo is way more flexible, meaning you can put them on mono element teams, meaning there's no reactions, or you can put them on teams where there are reactions. Obviously, the support isn't going to be as high as Sucrose's, but it's still going to be up there. Because again, the only elemental damage bonus Sucrose provides is when she activates C6. And the con with C6 is it only works when you trigger an elemental absorption with your burst. And like we talked about earlier, there's some cases where just getting an absorption with Sucrose's burst can be very difficult. Okay, and one thing I found with her C6 is it actually doesn't work really well with her passive talents. And what I mean by that is it's hard to get a single character to benefit from both her passive talents as well as her C6. And let me give you guys an example why that is. For example, I'm using my Kaya and I'm trying to trigger Melt with him. So when I use my Sucrose's Burst and it gets infused with Cryo, I get a 20% Cryo damage increase, which is great. But the downside is because my Burst is infused with Cryo, it's going to consistently apply cryo on the enemy. And why that's bad is because these two passive talents are increasing my elemental mastery. Meaning if I'm trying to trigger melt with Kaya, I need to apply pyro on the enemy before I can trigger that melt. But since we're consistently applying cryo with our burst, it doesn't work really well. So instead, the person that's going to be benefiting from this is going to be the pyro character triggering melt. And the person that's going to be benefiting from this is going to be the character that you infuse the element with. So it's kind of counterintuitive and it's really hard to get a character to do both because with my Kaya, when I was doing my testing, I only had like a split second where I got both the buffs active for my Kaya and I could trigger one melt reaction. Yeah guys, that's basically the pros and cons for Sucrose and Kazuha. So if you guys were in the situation where you had a Sucrose, even a C6 Sucrose for that matter, and you guys were debating, is it worth going for Kazuha? In my opinion, 100% yes. Like 
he really blows sucrose out of the water. And another thing going for sucrose, it's super easy to trigger swirl with sucrose because you can just swap in and even if your abilities are down, you can just quickly do an auto attack and trigger swirl. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to quickly get your viridescent effect up and it's gonna allow you to get the first passive talent for sucrose up as well, which is gonna increase your elemental mastery by 50. Whereas Kazuha, he has to use his E abilities. But then again, Kazuha has a very short E ability cooldown so it's not a huge difference, but that is something going for Sucrose. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. This took me forever to do because of how many times I had to use Sucrose's burst and just all these other things. But hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys are going to be pulling for Kazuha. Let me know if you guys already pulled for Kazuha and how you like him so far. In my opinion, I think he's great. I think he's a great Animo character. I think they did a really good job in making him. Because in this video, we just looked at the numbers. In terms of how fun Kazuha is, you can't even rate that because I've been having a blast playing him. I'm sure the people that have him are also having a blast. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.